Hallelujah. He said, make some noise for Jesus. It is a beautiful morning. And I just want to thank every single soul, every single body that came to CFC this morning. I believe y'all here this morning. Y'all fired up. Y'all are firing me up this morning. He is good. Y'all ready to have church this morning? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. You woke us up. We are here for a reason. There's things that need to be done. You're ready to move, Lord. So I pray that we just be ready. We just receive you this morning, God. Whatever you say, whatever you speak, we'll obey. We'll abide in you, Lord. I pray over every single soul that's in here this morning, Lord. They just feel you, your glory, your spirit, Lord. I pray that you just touch their minds, touch their bodies, and touch their souls, Lord, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Lord. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. I pray for restoration. I pray for salvation. I pray for freedom worship as they worship you, Lord. They just rain down like manna from heaven. May you just fill us with your fire, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are you happy to be back in the house of the living God?
somebody give him a shout. I think he is. Ooh, the Lord. They have had their Wheaties, their coffee. Somebody might have prayed before they got here. Hallelujah. We've been singing this song for a few weeks. <clears throat> I'd like to do that. My mic's cutting in and out, but it, not in my ears. I think it's the battery. So we're No, it's good. It's good. I think you're just going to have to get some. We're going to have to make a battery change, um, but I'll be all right. Um, we've been singing this song for a few weeks, and the reason I like to do that is just so the church will learn it and get to know it. It's all over the radio, and I'm so glad to see these wonderful men of God, these wonderful psalmists named Shane and Shane making a comeback in gospel music because they were, uh, they were out when I first got saved, and I latched on them onto them and then they disappeared for like 10 years and now they're back and uh, I love this song this morning it's called Already One y'all sing it with us if you know it like fighting a battle you've already won no
to me for my mic. I apologize to you for my mic cutting in and out. It'll be handled after today. Amen. No more rechargeables. We're going for the real thing. I'm making that decision right. Listen to that mic going in and out. Devil, get off this microphone. Amen. Don't give me another battery. Real quick. Real quick. Try to minister to the people. I want to tell you right now, <clears throat> there's a lot of unfair things going on in our society and in our country right now. We're hearing new words like lawfare, but let me tell you something, the church is still doing what, dealing with what we've always dealt with, and that's warfare. Warfare. And when you preach the kind of stuff we're preaching around here, you're going to stir up some demons. And some would say, well, why would you want to preach in such a way that it would cause satanic attacks? Let me tell you something. We need to expose the enemy in every single turn. And we need to say, devil, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. I see who you're trying to, to weaken. I see who you're attacking. I see who you're lying to. I see who you're burning out. I see who you're confusing. Come on, somebody. And I see who's falling for it. But no matter what, we still stand as the church of Jesus Christ in these last of the last days. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, give him a praise. out your hands this morning.
Father, every person under the sound of my voice this morning was made for more. They were made for more than just their families. They were made for more than just their careers and their hobbies. They were made by you and for you. They were made to be vessels unto you. Hallelujah. They weren't called to get saved and be silent. They are called to spread the gospel. They are called to be ambassadors of a country known as heaven. They are called to look and see with eyes of kingdom vision. And they are called to create a kingdom culture. God, we got too many saints falling off the front line in these last of the last days. And we got too many sitting on the sidelines taking a break. It is time to get armed up. This is what our salvation is for. These are the days that we have spoke of, that we've been preparing for, for you all that's been saved for decades. Don't get burnt out now. This is what you've been talking about for years. This is the faith you're supposed to have. You were made for more. You weren't called just to warm a seat in a church. You were called to set, serve, support. Come on, somebody. Encourage. Obey the word of God. Hallelujah. So, God, we were made for more in this place. Let us sing this new song this morning. Amen.
He says, why would I make a bed in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way? Grace is not something that we take advantage of, but it is something we need to receive. Amen. Receive that grace today. We make it a disgrace when we use it and take advantage of it. And we also make it a disgrace when we don't receive it and we quit and we keep on letting the enemy bring it up and we beat ourselves up. Amen. One more time. I was made to be sick in the grave. I was called by me. Sing it, check. Born and raised back to life again. Yeah. is here will you receive it will you receive his spirit this morning he wants to love on you this morning he wants to touch you this morning he wants to touch your mind he's healing really heal this morning if there's somebody that's in pain any body aches he can come to this altar because he can pray for you 
because he's going to hear you, heal you this morning. And that's what he can do. Enough with the program. Enough coming with an agenda. Let's follow God's agenda. Let's have let him steal the show again. Let's give it back to him, guys. Let's make time for him, make room for him. I'm thinking about that song, man. We can sing that song every day. Because sometimes we can be an enemy in our own minds. Because as soon as the enemy can get us to overthink, that's it. He wants us to overthink. He's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And sometimes we can be an enemy in our own minds so where we destroy ourselves. Sometimes we forget who we are. We forget our identity. We are children of God. We have kings and queens, guys. We have authority over our territory. There's time. It is time to get back up. It's time to get off the fence. It's time to stop being rubber mats. It's time to put on the full armor of God. The full armor, not just half. I think about grace. I think about Abraham. Before he got his name, he was called Abraham. The H inside Abraham is Hebrew for grace of God. I think about another story in the Bible where somebody else's name was changed. It's one of the disciples in the New Testament. His name was Simon, changed to Peter. Peter stands for the rock. And that rock means the foundation what God was going to build his church on, what Jesus was building his church on. Who are you this morning? Remember who you are. Most importantly, he is good. I'm sure she can come down. He is worthy. He is worth it. He is enough. He's more than enough. Even when we feel like we're not enough. He's good all the time. Even when we're not faithful and true, he is. But you know the great thing about that? He does not keep score. He doesn't keep a tally mark of every time you messed up. If I can just have some ministers come pray for this man. I'm going to pray for you in a minute. If there's anybody else, come to this altar now. I don't want you to leave here still bought down with it anymore. Because tomorrow, tomorrow is a new day. It's a new morning. And we know what happens in the morning. Our joy comes in the morning. What is your morning? What is your morning? Lay it down on this altar. Get it off your shoulder. See, I feel some of our faith is being tested this morning. Our belief is being tested this morning. See, I remember the story of Abraham and Isaac. As Abraham thought he was going to have to sacrifice his one and only son. He was going to take him up to a mountain. As Isaac was carrying a bundle of sticks and they were climbing and climbing, Isaac didn't understand. It's like he didn't understand what he was doing. He was just being, he was obeying God, obeying his father. And then when they get up there, they're binding up all the sticks and Abraham lays his son. He gets ready to get that sword to drive it through his heart. And as soon as he gets to there, God stops him. See, there are some things that God is asking for us to do, but we won't go there. We won't let him in. We won't let him have control. See, sometimes you already know what you got to do, but it's so hard. It is so hard. You won't complete the assignment that he's asked for you to do because we're scared. We're scared to be uncomfortable. Guys, God's not calling us to be comfortable this morning. When we get comfortable, we can get inconsistent. We can miss God. We can turn into a program. Trust Him and obey Him. Because I promise you, whatever He's asking you to do, He's already done it. He's already gone to the cross. There's nothing more harder than going to a cross and dying, being mocked, being made fun of. Wearing a crown of thorns. He did it all for you and for me. He did it for the church. We trust Him this morning. There are plenty of ways to give. If you cannot attend, you can give on our website at cfccentercross.com. 
You can also give on our SureFaith app. Just download instructions for Apple and Android on our web website and Facebook page. You can also mail in your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South North Carolina Highway 58, Elm City, 27822. And you can also scan the QR code up here on the board. Let's just pray. Let's just pray, church. God, we're asking you to just touch our bodies, touch our minds. Lord, we know you can do it. We know you can do it again. Because we know what your word says. We know how the story ends. Lord, you said, faith as small as a mustard seed. We can move mountains with that just small faith, Lord. Forgive us, God, when we fall short, Lord, of your glory. Even when we disobey, God, you're still here every time, waiting for us to come back to you, Lord. So this morning, we're running back to you, God. We lay it at your feet. Lord, just take the burdens off our shoulders and guide us and show us the way. Help us to call out any enemy, any unwelcome spirit. May we just be able to call it out boldly as you have called us to do. Lord, I pray over this service that you just have your way through the man of God that brings the message this morning. And this is your wor world, your, your word. May you just overflow, God. Anything that comes out of his mouth will glorify you pray over this offering as people give on to you we just trust you with your money we operate out of your wallet God I pray that you just bless them spiritually and financially Lord and the offering that's collected God be descended up in the sky Lord may you just multiply send it out as you see fit in Jesus almighty name I pray amen you may now give at this time
Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't God good? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Where's that energy from a while ago? I said, is God good? Thank you. Just like the song says, let every breath. No, no, no. I said it backwards. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Give God a praise. Uh, I, that was confirmation for something for Wednesday night. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to spoil it, all right? All right. Who's ready for the word this morning? It's good. I missed you guys. It's been a long, long week, and I'm telling you, when you miss one service, it's like you missed a whole month. Amen? That's just how God, God is good. And just, just a little bit of a testimony. When I was at camp this week, it was amazing. It was an awesome experience. And the second we leave camp, it's like... What in the world? It's like we go to a spiritual ground. We go to a spiritual ground and we step back. It's like, uh-oh, here it is. It's the real deal. So now when we go from pre preaching to kids, worshiping every single day, we got to come out into the world. We got to come back to real civiliz civilization, to reality, and we got to continue to do what we've done all week, right? That's the same thing what we have to do every single day. When we wake up, we spend time with God, we pray, we worship, we love on him, and we go back out there, and we keep on doing what we're doing. Amen? Amen. So at this time, I'm going to bring forth to the stage our pastor, Pastor Daniel Parker, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. So thankful to be here this morning on this summer Sunday morning. So good to see your faces this morning. I want to read something to you. It says, thank you for having such a giving spirit. You are truly a blessing. CSC, I thank you so much for the honor and gifts you gave to me on my birthday. You made me feel so loved. It will always be special to me why I am not looking for a pat on the back. It makes me feel good to know that my labor has not gone unnoticed. May God bless you all. Pastor Jerry Brazil. Amen. What a celebration we had last week for that. It was so special. Amen. Uh, God just did some amazing things in that service, and I'm just so thankful for everything that took place. And let me say, as your pastor in the year 2024, it moved my heart for all of you to be here to help celebrate my pastor. Amen. Amen. And tell him happy birthday and just shower him with the gifts that you did. Uh, we really put a spoiling on him. Amen. And then sent him out of here. He had a big lunch. And he has just been glowing about it ever since. And you really made a difference being here and all that you did for him. Even though you didn't sit under his ministry, only a small handful of people in this church did. Amen. Including myself and my wife. But the rest of you have been under this ministry but you love him so much because even though he's not actively pastoring the church, he still ministers here. He goes around and speaks to each and every one of you. He calls and checks on people. I don't tell him to do that. God tells him to do that. Amen. And so we're so thankful for him. Happy birthday again, Brother Jerry. You make 80 look fantastic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're a visitor this morning, please uh, turn your slip into the Connect Corner after service. We have a gift for you there at the Connect Corner. We have monthly uh, CFC event calendars, gifts, sign-up sheets, and more. They're all located there. Our newest book, A Kingdom Culture, is now available at the Connect Corner. The audio versions of our first book, Kingdom Vision, is available now at the Connect Corner, and we will have audio versions of Kingdom Culture ready in a few weeks. We're going to start making them soon uh, because we've got a third book coming out. Victimology is finished. It's going to be published, and we should have it in a few weeks, so get ready for that. Our all-new family room is now open. You can go in there with your little one uh, that may not be comfortable in the nursery yet, that may not want to go to Junior King's Kids. It's fine. You can use that room. There's a playpen in there. There's a changing table. The service is on the screen in there in exact time, with, uh, in real time. There's no delay. 
And uh, if the parents can go in there, they can take care of their child. And if one needs to come to the altar, you're just a few feet away from it. Just close the door behind you when you go in there. And if they get uncomfortable during the sermon today, take them in there, please. We appreciate that. If you are ever in need of valet parking, please pull up to the front door and notify a security usher, and they will assist you before and after service. Amen? Hear me now. Hear me. Don't say we didn't offer. Hallelujah. Praise God. We tried picking you up in the golf cart, and you said, no, I'll walk. Amen? But if you have trouble walking that far, if you get here late and your car is way out there, amen, we want to bless people, people who are handicapped, people who are having trouble walking. We will even park your car for you. That's how much we love you and want to help you. Amen? So just take advantage of that. You'll tell the security usher at the front door, and they'll take care of it before and after service. Big thanks to all who supported Pastor Jerry's 80th birthday celebration, which featured the unveiling of the plans for the all-new Jerry L. Brazil Family Life Center. It's out in the lobby, and the building fund has begun and is set up online on our Share Faith app for ongoing donations. I want to brag on God. Amen. Last Sunday in one offering to begin the building fund on this Jerry L. Brazil Family Life Center, you all gave over $12,000. Thank you for being generous. Thank you for being obedient. Amen? The church has to have obedient people, amen, that realize, hallelujah, you can't just hold back everything and worry. you got to trust God, amen, and we're going to trust God. Before too long, we're going to see some concrete out there. Hallelujah. Come on, believe with me. After that, we're going to see some, some, some structuring going up, amen. Oh, I believe this thing's going to happen faster than we expect. And God's not just going to use you. He's going to use the community. Amen. And we're going to have the Jerry L. Brazil Family Life Center. Before you know it, come on and give God a praise if you believe. We're not going to go into any debt. Because the Bible says to owe no man nothing but to love him, we're going to borrow the money from our own selves. That's how we, every time we do something, we finance it from our own self. We don't go ask a bank or man for nothing. Mm -mm. We're not going to be in debt here. It's like the pastor said, or Sister Irma quoted it last week. Folks are in enough debt at home. They don't need to be in debt at church too. Come on, that old school wisdom still applies, y'all. Amen? So just sit back and watch what God does through you, through the community. Amen. Now today is Fifth Sunday Missions offering. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't want to neglect missions. The reason why is because we pay out from missions every single month. Our partners need it. And we want to add more partners and you can see who those partners are out there on the banner at the bottom of the ramp. We've even got, I don't, is St. Jude's up there? St. Jude's is up there. Samaritan's Purse isn't a, a, up there, but we don't give to them every month, but we give them one big lump sum whenever a disaster takes place because we trust them. And we, um, we trust them at Christmas time when they give the shoebox blessings. So we really need to get Samaritan's Purse up there too. But we give to so many missions, and we don't want to neglect that. So if you were able to give this morning, there's a missions tab online on the app. Uh, if you want to give now, you can go right to your phone. You can go right to your mobile device. The missions uh, 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 selection is on there on the app. Um, and if you want to give something before you leave and you write a check, just write missions in the notation. Amen. And we will continue to give. And I believe that's why God is blessing this church so much. Because the church is giving to the poor and the needy at a greater level than ever before. You see, as you grow, you have to give even more. Amen. That's how it works. Seed time and harvest. Amen. All right, here's another announcement. Special needs children training session. 
for all CFC volunteers in any youth ministry, including nursery, is on Sunday, July 14th, after service with lunch served. If you work in any capacity of the youth, we want you here. If you are a security usher, we'd love to have you here as well. We'll feed you, and we have a very, uh, very accomplished leader coming over uh, to teach this for our church. Amen. It's already been done at Midpoint in Middlesex. It's already been done at Rise Church in Rocky Mount. And so this is my own little sister. I got to bring her over here. She's about to get some kind of degree. She's about to be Dr. Susie Strickland here for too long. Uh, she has gone to school for like 25 years now. Amen. Hallelujah. But she runs a groundbreaking breakthrough clinic called Cross River Therapy. Amen. I'm looking at Carlos like he works there. I keep thinking Carlos works there. It's my son and Felicity that work there. Amen. Uh, it's Cross River Therapy. It's groundbreaking, and it's a God thing. It really is a God thing. And so with that said, we want to get that training here for our volunteers. All right, Fusion, stu Fusion Student Ministry for high school, college, and early career, and Fusion Rising for middle schoolers, is coming soon. We realize we need to break these groups apart, be praying that we can find the right leadership to do so, and be praying also the students and the leaders that were at camp, that was last week, they're back now. Carlos has some things to share, but he's going to do it Wednesday night, amen. He's going to recognize some special people Wednesday night, and then he's going to preach the gospel, amen. Hey, a lot of times we wind down on the summertime. I preach, uh, I'm preaching just on Sunday mornings right now with this message. But uh, you guys, I want to thank you so much. We, have, we were having really good crowds on Wednesday nights. And it's exciting to hear different lay ministers in the church preach every week. You come in like, who's it going to be this week? Who are we going to hear from this week? And uh, Joy uh, done a great job this past week. And now uh, Carlos is coming. And also, God's laid on my heart. We also only do one worship song acoustic and then we'll sometimes have a special. Uh, I don't have a special plan for this week, but God has given me a new song, and I've written it, and I want my church family to be a part of the songwriting journey and watch these songs evolve because what they are now, they might grow into something even bigger, and so I'm going to bring you a song uh, I, I ran it by the worship team this morning. They liked it, amen, or at least they told me they did. They might have just been being nice. Um, but I'm going to play it for you um, Wednesday night and see how y'all like it. Amen. Uh, our VBS is August 7th through the 10th. August 7th through the 10th. Bring your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your neighbors, your cousins, everybody. Uh, VBS 2024 is August 7th through the 10th. All right. Also, next Sunday, we want to welcome new members if you have prayed about it and you know God has called you to be a part of this church, then please see Pastor Tim. See him after church today. Uh, shoot him a text this week. He'll set up a meeting. He'll go over the church uh, constitution with you. And you can join as early as next Sunday because we do that on first Sunday. But something else we're going to do on first Sunday. This week we celebrate our independence as a nation. Amen. But also, we're going to take Holy Communion next Sunday. Amen. We're supposed to do that often. And so come on and take Holy Communion. If you're in town, I know a lot of people will be traveling. But if you're in town, come on, let's take Holy Communion next Sunday. All right. It is time to recognize our June 2024 Servants of the Month. Amen. I cannot say enough about my pastor's celebration I'm so thankful for the drama team. I'm so thankful for uh, Sister Irma and the, the, the history that she shared with us and all the wonderful things that she had to say. But, you know, when it comes to something like that, I have to lean on somebody to coordinate it and lead it. And we need to recognize Wendy Gardner this morning as our June 2024 Servant of the Month. We're going to send you to go eat a big old steak when you leave here. Amen. Hallelujah. You stand right here with me. And then we want to continue to thank God for new people. Amen. Uh, this brother has just come in here, brought his family in here, serving already. 
Amen. I already know this is their home. Hallelujah. Even though we ain't made it official yet, it's already official in heaven. Praise God. And he's serving. He's bringing so much generosity, love, and faithfulness. We got to recognize Rodney Eason this morning. Hey, come on, brother. Thank God for people like you. Amen. Y'all come on. Hallelujah. Sister Wendy, have you got anything you'd like to say to the church? It's just an honor to serve the Lord. Always. I'd rather be than CFC. Amen. I second that. I second that. How about you, Brother Rodney? I'm good. You're good. Amen. <laughs> There's a steak right there for you to go take Sister Kim, and y'all have a good lunch today. Aren't we thankful for these two? Rodney Eason, Wendy Gardner, your June 2024 Servants of the Month. All right. That is all I have this morning so the King's kids and the Junior King's kids can be dismissed. Isn't it good to have our good friend and brother Kevin Shaw with us this morning? Uh, love that guy. Hallelujah. He loves Jesus. First time I ever saw you, you had hair down to here. You had the big hair going. Amen. Y'all were playing some Grand Funk Railroad. We're an American man. And I heard somebody say, this is the reincarnation of Kevin Shaw. And what I didn't realize, right after that, right after I saw you at the Harley shop playing with Tongue and Groove, for too long you would be in a band called Feed because you had given your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And he's done so much for the kingdom. He has uh, implemented and established worship teams at multiple churches, and he's now just ready to fill in whenever he's needed, and he's a phone call away. Amen, and we appreciate you. You are family here, brother. Amen. All right, you ready to back me up this morning? Here we go. All right, let's, uh, let's turn in our Bibles this morning to John chapter 11. The Gospel of John chapter 11. I told you when we preach stuff like this, it exposes demons. It exposes weakness. And with that, you will see people act uncharacteristically. You'll be shocked by the way they lash out. You'll be shocked by the confusing things they say, hallelujah, and it won't make sense. But they've fallen into a victim mindset. And the victim mindset comes with elements like misery loves company. It comes with elements of attention seeking. Let me tell you something. You don't need my attention. You don't need Pastor Tim's attention. The only attention you need is the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who's coming back to rescue you. Amen? But this victimology stuff, we preached it last year. We realized we needed to revisit it this summer again. And the feedback from all of you, I appreciate it, but I give God the glory. And many have said how it is helping them. It's like we're having therapy in the middle of church. <laughs> oh, but hey, you ain't never heard too many therapists preach, amen. So we're going to run, we're going to spit, we're going to do some cartwheels. We might even throw a couple of babies across the room, amen, and have a good time this morning. Now, I'm not going to come get your baby. I'm just kidding. But we're going to look at this. The term victimology is one that was laid upon my heart last year concerning the victim mindset that can bring on one's own self-pity that is used as a demonic weapon that causes a person to act out even uncharacteristically. This attack is not just on one front, but many. It's on the front of spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And when you're getting hit like that, it can even break you down physically. It is a literal gun that we put in the hand of Satan himself. And all summer long, we've been pointing out the, the signs of it. 
that we implement which can usher in this massive spiritual disorder as well as the triggers that can set it off and so much more in this returning extended sermon series victimology to the demonic weapon of self-pity father i ask for your help today god let me preach out of brokenness let me preach out of pain let me preach out of concern that although this subject this morning is taking a turn towards the hurtful the painful and even the excruciating let it be to any person in here this morning that's broken hearted let it be an encouragement and to those who have not yet experienced what we're about to talk about this morning let it be a warning an advisory to them to beware so that they won't be unaware when the tactics of the enemy comes after them. God, I thank you for the freedom to worship in this place. I thank you for your salvation plan. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that I've got some people here this morning that know where they're supposed to be, that we've got some people here this morning that back up this preacher and are ready to hear the word of the living God because they're growing, hallelujah, they're receiving and they're ready to go to another level in Jesus' holy name. If that's you, somebody say amen. Say amen and give him praise because he's worthy. Before we get into John 11, quote a few other scriptures so just hold your place there but I want to give you the, um, the the focus point for today and that's this the trigger of grief amen I heard that <laughs> and I'm not trying to take us from up here to a somber mood but when I tell you you need to know what triggers this stuff grief can even trigger it We've already looked at the causes. The causes was the spirit of offense. The causes were spiritual immaturity. Then we went to the trigger of rejection. We spent two weeks on that. We're only going to spend this morning talking about this. But I had to live this in order to preach this. I had to endure this in order to be able to relay it to you. And there are many people under the sound of my voice this morning that are here today, and you have gone through many things. Just this past week, I had to officiate the funeral of an old friend of mine named John Sherrod. His father passed away suddenly, even though he had been battling cancer. Uh, and then Sister Phyllis's daughter, her oldest daughter, her father, passed away this week. And so I, I really feel, I know I'm at that age where people are starting to lose their parents, but I'm ministering to these folks and saying, listen, we're at a time right now in our church where there's a lot of kindred spirits here. A lot of people are going through what you're going through. Don't go through it alone, right? Amen. And so I'm not trying to make anybody upset this morning I'm not trying to get everybody to cry and shed tears but if you want to go ahead it's alright there is no judgment here but what I do want to tell you this morning is this is a trigger that will drive you down into a pit that can make you a victim that's the way I began to be and then I had to come up one day and say I'm not the only preacher who ever lost his daddy Amen. You lost yours. And so I've got to keep going. Brother Gene, you lost yours. I got to keep going. I can't quit now. Can I tell you the enemy has come at me with every kind of fiery dart, every kind of letdown, every kind of disappointment, every kind of attack, every kind of stressful situations. Amen. And sometimes I just like, my God, devil, what else do you want to do? But can I tell you this morning, devil, I see you. You are There's nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. And I could stand here this morning with a bunch of arrows in my back, but it ain't going to stop me. I'm going to keep preaching this thing all the way to glory. The trigger of grief. Here's an excerpt from our upcoming book called Victimology. It says this. 
if you live and love long enough, there's no way you'll bypass the element of grief. Grief over a dear loved one's passing is a substantial period in your life and a huge aspect of it. You'll think about so many things. You'll, re, you'll go over in your head. And guess what? It helps people to talk about it. When I talked with uh, my friend John, his dad was my first ball coach. And he was a member of EMS that came to my parents' house many times in emergency situations. And he even visited our church a few months ago. He said the pastor uh, of the church that my dad's a charter member of, they don't really know each other. But he knew you and you knew him. Would you come and say some things about him? And I did. But I realized on the phone when we first talked, he wanted to tell me everything about the day that his daddy died. And when you lose someone very close to you, it helps to talk about everything that led up to their last few moments of life. And it's not because you're trying to beat yourself up, but you have to go through this process. You have to go reliving it in your mind. Amen? And then you're going to be sensitive to a lot of things. Your insecurities are going to bubble up. You're going to see things wrong. Things are going to hit you wrong. Can I tell you, if you are ever in the presence, in the close presence of someone who is grieving and they have lost someone very important to them, you need to give them some space. You need to give them some patience. And the ways in which they think and act at that time, do not hold it against them. They are not themselves. They are broken. And especially if you're like me and about a, over a half a dozen folks in this church right now as I speak, if you're like us and we have lost one of our parents, you feel like an orphan on this earth. But I'm so glad the King of Kings adopted me. Amen? And so with that said, you'll... It's a substantial period in your life and a huge part of it. I also wrote this. Grief is a massive heaviness that weighs on you for quite some time. It's been over two years since I lost my dad, and I can still feel the pain. Just when you think it has lifted and it's gotten easier, suddenly you hear a song. You find an heirloom or a picture, and immediately a flashback in your mind registers, and there it is all over again, grief. Yet it is both natural and it is necessary. It is natural and necessary. Let me read to you Psalm 34, 18. I've read this recently, and I want to read it again. The Lord longs to minister to us as we grieve. The psalmist and warrior King David wrote this in Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit, meaning a remorseful and repentant spirit. The Lord wants and desires to minister, uh, minister to us in our brokenhearted pain, yet grief can be so painful at times that within ourselves we may find ourselves lashing out at God and even blaming him. Why? Because if nothing is impossible for him, then why didn't he heal him? If God can do anything, and this is the one thing this Christian needs you to do, I need you to heal him. Not just so that I can have him around longer, God, but so that your name can be made great. So that people can see a modern day Lazarus story. Amen? But when that doesn't happen, that person going through that grief, even though they're a good Christian, even though they love their church, even though they can quote scripture verbatim, in their hearts they might not be letting on to you that they're upset with God. Amen? I told you, and I, you know, we've been talking about how these things can cause us to think like a victim. And I've already said that you'll never live like a conqueror if you think like a victim, right? But today, when we get to the point of blaming God, it's then that we have to get our eyes on the bigger picture and have this resolve. If Jesus is Lord of your life, then let him be Lord over all your life. 
What do you mean? Give me shouting point number two this morning. Because I just told you number one. Let him be the God of your prayers and the God of your unanswered prayers. <laughs> there was a country song in high school when I was coming up from Garth Brooks. Y'all remember that one? Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. You say, well, that don't have nothing to do with somebody dying. That had to do with a high school girlfriend. Things didn't work out, and he was able to find the love of his life, blah, blah, blah. And now, really, in real life, he didn't even find the love of his life because now he's with Trisha Yearwood. <laughs> but what he was trying to say in the song is sometimes we think we want things and we weren't ready for them, or God was trying to protect us from things that would have turned out wrong for us. But when it comes to somebody good, somebody who's so needed, so necessary in our life, and we don't get that prayer answered, that's hard. That's hard. There are times right now that I want to pick up that phone and I want to call Daddy and ask him, what do I do? In this situation, there are things I wanted to say. There were things that I should have done many years. Mm. Mama said, you need to realize this disease your daddy has, it will eventually wear him down. Now, daddy's going to be fine. So I'm telling you, we got tickets to this festival. He wants to go. Vince Gill's going to be there. I think even Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, it was a blue gra bluegrass festival. I said, no, y'all go ahead. And I didn't go. Do you know how bad I wish I'd have gone? He always said, when you play golf, you take me out there with you. I, I won't try to play or nothing. I just want to watch you. And I never went and picked him up, put him in the cart. And let him watch. I live with that regret. Because I'm this faith-filled preacher who preaches the kingdom. And God has spoiled me. He's given me what I need. He's given me what I want. He has blessed me beyond anything I can imagine. Hallelujah. He's blessed me with a house. He's blessed me with a family. He's blessed me with, with sons. He's blessed me with a beautiful grandson. He's blessed me with this church. He's blessed me with this awesome worship team that's making a record. Amen. And I'm living a dream to be sure. Daddy's going to live. And he's going to come up here with me and he's going to sing a gospel song for the whole church after his healing. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I realized, wait a minute, God. I'm leaving you out of my grief. And that's when I realized I got to let you be the God of my prayers but you got to be the God of my unanswered prayers too. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Get mad at God like folks get mad at each other? Like Christians get mad with each other? Oh, you didn't do what I wanted you to do, so I'm going to not talk to you. God. And we will. Amen? We will treat him like that. There used to be a worship song that Jesus culture did. said, I don't want to pretend like you're not even in the room. Do you know how many Christians will sit in a church service and, I, hallelujah, and people will be speaking in tongues, worshiping God, and the glory of God will fill the place, but there will be others that are so fixated on their religion and the doctrine they grew up with and the concerns that they have and where they got to be after church, they will act like he's not even in the room. So people will ignore God in worship. They'll ignore God in their grief. Amen. Hallelujah. Let him be the God of your prayers and the God of your unanswered prayers. Don't leave him out. Don't grieve without him. Amen. He's near to those who have a broken heart. He's right there. You just need to embrace him. Don't turn from him. Don't rebel against his word. Don't rebel against his lifestyle for you. 
Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus declared in his Beatitudes from his Sermon on the Mount. He said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. The Lord has every intention of meeting us in our brokenness. We just have to turn to him, not away from him. And grief can cause us to do just that. You don't think so? Amen? I know people right now, they love God and we're on fire for God. Somebody died that they prayed would live, they're done with God. Ain't been to church in a decade. Don't want to hear no gospel preaching. Come on, somebody. That trigger of grief will take them towards being a victim. And then they'll go down so deeply into that pit. Another thing I realized is that I had my father for 47 years. Some people only have their father for five. Amen? What about the people whose, whose parent, their mother or their father, died when they were little and they had to grow up without them their whole life? I'm a lot more blessed in that regard. Amen? Hallelujah. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Mm. Hallelujah. Because grief, it can trigger a self-pitied victim, victim mindset that blames God instead of embracing the very comfort he offers. Let me tell you, he wants to comfort you. Yet we forget Jesus' own relatable nature in that he knows the pain of grief. He felt the pain of grief when his friend Lazarus died. John 11, you've been holding your place there. Let's look at verse 32. When Jesus showed up to Lazarus' home, it was said to be four days too late. But I remember the old Karen Peck New River song that said, even when he's four days late, he's still right on time. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, meaning the weight of their grief hurt him too. And Jesus said in verse 34, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And in verse 35 is the shortest verse in all the Bible, but it says so much. Jesus wept. Wait a minute. He's a divine human being who knew he had resurrection power. Amen? Yet he was overcome in his grief. What God overcome? His flesh. The same flesh that's unsaved and will attack you will overwhelm you and try to make you forget the power of God is real. It'll try to make you forget that God is still good. It'll try to get your eyes off a real place called heaven and start making you think it's a fairy tale. Hallelujah. Come on. If I believe in what I preach, then is my earthly father really gone? No. He's in the presence of the one who saved him and healed him forever. Right? Jesus wept in verse 36 says, Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Look, he... he he loved that man. I got upset one time after I was next to a, a good friend of mine. He was a bass player in one of my old club bands. And he was dying of cancer. We led him to Christ on his deathbed. We sang Amazing Grace. And he received it. He had brain cancer. And it came, um, he, he had got to where he couldn't think and talk right. But I have seen God do this on two occasions. I have seen a man come out of the fog of Alzheimer's and receive Christ. You say, that's not possible. If a man that was hanging out in the graveyard naked with a, with a legion of demons can still bow at the feet of Jesus, you better believe that when a Holy Ghost filled preacher is talking about salvation to somebody, even though Alzheimer's is trying to kill their brain, even though brain cancer is trying to take down their brain, the power of God can make them wake up 
to say the most important thing they've ever said in their life. And that is, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I had to check with him. He was my buddy named Clark. I said, Clark, do you know what you have said? He said, yes, I receive it. It feels good. It feels right. I walked out of that room. I got out there on the sidewalk. I hit my, grabbed my knees and I cried like a baby. And his girlfriend saw me and she sent me a text saying, I saw you get upset before you got in that truck. You really love him. I said, I love him. I said, but he's going to be all right because he just gave his life to Jesus. He never came to church. He never worshiped God. He never got baptized. But come on, somebody. Jesus told the thief on the right, today you'll be with me in paradise. He even gave a parable one time, and he said the vineyard workers that came in at the last hour of the day received the same thing that the ones who came at the beginning of the day. You better know there's some uh, doctrines, some preachers who try to knock down and say that deathbed salvation is not real. You've got to live it. Amen. You need to live it if you know. But I'm here to tell you, God can save anybody at any time if they'll just let him. If there's no such thing as deathbed salvation, then Jesus was lying to the thief on the right. And Jesus ain't a liar. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody give your God a praise this morning. Hallelujah. They said, see how he loved him? He loved that man. Mm. He's crying about him. He thought a lot of him. Verse 37. And then some said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Come on. And he's already had Mary say, Lord, if you'd have just been here. Hallelujah. It hurts a powerful person of God. When the people around him start to lose faith in him. It hurts. But just because they don't believe in his anointing no more. Don't mean he ain't still anointed. Just because they say they can't receive no power no more. Don't mean that he's not powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself, grieving over the loss and the blame coming at him at the same time. Mm. After my daddy died, I said, <clears throat> I'll be at a time of peace. I'll take a sabbatical. I will just bask in peace and, tranqu and tranquility. Tranquility. Ugh, I don't need to make up a new word. Tranquility for a while and everything will be good. Guess what? I realized during that time, Pastor Tim, the devil don't take a day off. And that some Christians realize you're going through hell on earth and some don't care. Because if they got something they want to tell you that they don't like, they don't care that your daddy just died. They're going to still come down on you. Mm. Come on, somebody. Why? Because they were a victim, acting like a victim, and every time somebody acts like a victim, especially Christians, their number one target, amen, is the man or woman of God. That's who they'll put all the blame on. Pastor Jerry told me, he said, now listen, you're going to have to realize something about pastoring. I said, all right, what is it? Amen. Get to go to the hospital and get one of them good vanilla milkshakes. Get to preach. Feel the pie. He said, no. He said, Always remember, they're always going to say it's your fault. They're always going to say it was your fault. Amen. And a lot of times, the mistakes I've made that other people think are mistakes and shout me down for is simply because I believe in the best of people. And I try to give everybody a chance. But guess what? I'm still learning. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take 
away the stone. Take away what is keeping him from coming out. Take away what is keeping him from breaking through. Can I tell you today, it is time for many people in this room and online this morning for the stone to come away and you be able to finally come out. Come out of where you've been. Enough's enough. Can I tell you, playtime is over. Excuses are over. It is time to get ready for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Well, I'm just looking for a church to pop into every now and then. Well, I, amen, more the welcome. Praise God. But can I tell you what we're really here to do? We're here to raise up an army. We are here to raise up an army. And the Holy Ghost is enlisting people right now. And we're living in a time where everybody's not going to be able to be on that front line. Because when you preach stuff like this, you better get ready for demons to tremble, demons to stir up, demons to confuse, demons to lie. Come on, somebody. And take people away from the front line. The devil don't care how long you've been a member of a church. All he cares about is can he weaken your power? Can he get you to sit down and be mad and not talk no more? Can he get you to sit down and back up and not pray through? Can he get you to quit serving God and shouting the victory? <laughs> Amen. How many people can I divide in the last of the last days? Jesus said there would come a time in the last of the last days where the sheep would be separated from the goats. Where the wheat would be separated from the tares. Amen? And the people you know, would have always thought were sheep are ending up becoming goats. And I done told y'all how I feel about them goats. <laughs> Amen? But can I tell the goats out there, there's still time to become a sheep. There's still time to get out your feelings. There's still time, hallelujah, for you to come up and say, no, no, devil, you're not going to do this. You're not going to take me away from my calling. You're not going to take me away from the people who believe in me and trust me. No. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, take away the stone and the rest is history. Amen. But this miracle also sealed Jesus' earthly faith. Faith. What do you mean? He knew when he dropped a miracle like that, when he did something so supernaturally awesome like that, oh, he was about to make the devil real mad. And everybody who he, the devil had lied to and turned against him. And can I tell you, it's hard to handle that. It's hard. To lead somebody to Jesus one week and the next week somebody tell you that you ain't worth nothing. <sighs> Come on, somebody. This miracle sealed Jesus' earthly faith. When his hope by way of the resurrecting power of faith overwhelmed his own grief and overruled the power of death over Lazarus, guess what happened? He was able to still raise Lazarus from the dead. What did he do? He depended on the Father. Amen? You've blessed me. You know me. Hallelujah. And you do things like this for me, God. I'm paraphrasing. Amen? Hallelujah. But he trusted the Father. He was not alone in his grief. He wasn't alone when people were stabbing him in the back, talking about him behind his back, blaming him for everything that's gone wrong. Come on, somebody. Looking at him saying, huh, couldn't you have done a better job than this? And he let it overwhelm him. Amen. And he overwhelmed all the doubt, all the grief. And Lazarus was raised from the dead. People's faith was restored in Jesus. But guess what happened? He was attacked even more. To the point that it won't long after that, Pastor Tim, they killed him and put him on a cross. It just goes to show 
this right here. Give me shout point number three. The enemy wants to overwhelm you during your grief, then drag you back down after it. What do you mean? You're grieving, and you're still not being left alone. You're like, my God, they're still acting that way? I'm grieving right now. Don't they understand? No, you're still getting hit. Then once you start to feel like you're getting stronger and you're not crying every day and you're not crying every morning and you feel like you finally got some relief, guess what the enemy wants to do then? Drag you back down in it. Why? Amen? He wants to take you here. Look what this person is doing. They're sitting down, they're reading the word. But look at the demons coming after them. And this wears people out. And makes them give up on God. But can I tell you, if you will still speak the victory, don't just hold up the word, Adam. Speak the word out of your mouth. Amen? Because when you speak it, it begins to flourish. When you speak it, you can't just hold up somebody else's Bible. You can't just hold up your own Bible. You got to speak the word out of your mouth. That's how you get a kingdom culture. Because God told Adam, whatever you name it, Adam, that's what it'll be. And we will speak burdens. We will speak about all the things that worry us. We will speak about all the things that tick us off. We'll get on Facebook and act like we're not calling nobody out, but we really are. Amen. And we'll do all of that when it comes to speaking negativity. But when it comes to speaking power, the devil's got you quiet because he's got you in a corner thinking you can't stand it no more. But can I tell you, Jesus Christ died on a cross so that you can walk and live in power. Oh, does anybody know what this preacher's talking about this morning? Enough of this victim mindset. Enough of the pity parties. Enough of the attention seeking. Enough of what you say you prayed for and it don't, know, it don't make a bit of sense. Ain't nobody praying. Ain't nobody praying. Hallelujah. If we were praying, we wouldn't be in the shape this nation is right now. But God has handed us over and said, see how bad things can get? It's time to start praying. It's time, church. I know it's the summertime, and I know people got places they got to be. Oh, my, hallelujah. We got vacation plans. We got lunch plans. We got all kinds of plans. But can I tell you, will you plan to pray some? Amen. Will you really crave to get in the presence of God and hear God speak and not your own flesh talking back to you? Amen. The enemy wants to overwhelm you during your grief, then drag you back down after it. Jesus could have played the victim. He could have said, well, I'm sorry, y'all. I know it's four days late, but I came to show y'all a miracle. I came to blow y'all's mind. But don't none of you have any faith in me. And so y'all beating me down with your words. Y'all beating me down with your gossip. Y'all beating me down with judging me and the decisions I make. Y'all beating me down so bad, I, I can't do nothing around here. Oh, I, 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 I just give up too. I'm going to complain about me too. I agree with you. I wish I was better. I wish I was more skilled. I wish I was more known. I wish I was more powerful. No, it didn't matter whether they had faith or not. He did. He did. Who did he have faith in? The Father. He knew his Father could raise that man up. Amen? We got to have the same faith Jesus had while he was walking this earth. Hallelujah. I can't have just the faith of Jerry Brazil. That's his faith. I can't just have the faith of Tim Hall. That's his faith. I got to have the faith of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he told them, greater works will you do than I did. Where are they at? Where are they at? They're not because people don't have no faith, because people ain't praying. People are caught up on their phones. They're caught up on their iPads. They're caught up on their, their, their business. They're caught up on making money. They're caught up on everything else. But we're not caught up in glory. If you want to get caught up in glory right now, one day, how about start getting caught up in it now? 
Oh, hallelujah. I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be a downtrodden message where I just got up here and talked real soft and we could all go home by 1130. Then all of you would run around talking about, our pastor let us out at 1130. And we something. And we're spirit-filled. we spirit-filled and we're getting out of church. <laughs> that way you could go and compare it because, see, today's thing is make your services shorter. Make your services shorter. Do this, do that, and your church will grow. But if you want, come on, if you don't want your church to grow, then keep doing this, doing that. Amen. I'm all about efficiency. If I run out and I'm done, then I'm done. Ain't no need to stay here and try to be holier than the church down the road. And if I can get you to the buffet in time and you can get all the chicken, come on, if you beat the Baptist down there, hallelujah. I love them. I love them. But if you think you're going to beat them to the buffet, you got another thing coming. They're going to get there. They're going to get there. <laughs> Amen. They're going to get there. Hallelujah. I didn't come to beat you up this morning. I didn't come to step on your toes either. But there's too much nonsense and foolishness going on. Amen. And I am bound and determined right now, no matter who's with me, who's against me, no matter who likes me, who don't like me no more, I am still going to approach everything with mountain-moving faith, whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whether anybody believes it or not, Scott, you ain't got to worry about no cancer no more. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to keep on proclaiming his name. Somebody ought to get up at your seat right now and just give him a mighty shout of Get behind us, devil! Get behind us! Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. All right, sit back down and give me one more minute. Give me one more minute. Please, one more. In his flesh, Jesus was deeply sad and grieved over Lazarus' suffering and death. But in his spirit, he remembered who he was and called out to the Father to overwhelm the spirit of death with the power of resurrection and the spirit of grief with the hope of glory. We have to fix our eyes on heaven and cry out to God no matter how it turns out. Give me Romans 8. Look at the resolve. Look at the, re the resolute outlook that Paul had. He said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen? Where's my sisters at that's lost their daddies in recent time? There you are. There you are. There you are. There you are. We've been going through something, ain't we? Amen? Can I tell you, every bit of suffering that we have had and that we've gone through it's not gone unnoticed God's got something he's going to reveal to us in glory when we get to heaven one day sister Renee sister Wendy sister, T uh, sister I almost said sister Tiffany sister Tina amen when we get there one day what a day it's going to be we're going to get to see our daddy amen and we're going to be excited and we're going to say my God you look so good <laughs> you look so young daddy you look so free. You look so whole. You look so healed. You're going to see, Brother Hall. You're going to see, Brother Butch. And they're going to be young and vibrant again. And all the excitement we felt for seeing them, all of a sudden it's going to be overshadowed by this bright light coming towards us. And my earthly father, who ain't never 
memorized no scripture, hasn't ever come on somebody, but he knows more about heaven than I could ever possibly read and learn. He's going to say, son, I'm glad that you're happy to see me. I'm glad you're happy to see your granddaddy and your grandmama. I'm glad you're here, happy to see your Uncle Leon. But son, let me tell you something. It ain't nothing compared to what's coming down this gold brick road right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa. And Jesus is going to come. And we're all, he'll be able to hug us all at one time. And we'll feel an overwhelming power that we can still feel right now. Every time we pray and believe and call on his name. Can I tell you, I believe this morning, Jesus wants to give us all a big hug this morning. Men, grief is a part of life, but it is not the end of happiness. <laughs> you will smile again because you have the hope of glory. Therefore, remember this. This is my last shouting point. Number four, grief may break your heart, but it doesn't have to break you. It broke your heart, but it doesn't have to break you you it was hard to be broken it's hard to walk in brokenness amen but we serve a God who specializes in putting broken people back together again we have just got to invite him in to do it men this can all be culminated and summed up in one verse from the prophetic book that foretells our eternal future in the new heaven and earth that is to come that fortifies God's forever kingdom with his people. Revelation 21.4, and then I'm done. This is how John described the revelation of Christ. He said, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more death. You see, it's already been defeated. I start off and officiate every funeral by saying this. That which saddens us today was defeated over 2,000 years ago on the cross. So it's defeated now. We don't have to wait for it to be defeated. Amen? That means we don't have to live under the power of it. But one day, it's going to be wiped away. No more. Removed. No more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen? So you see, grief has an end because death and pain have an end. In fact, the power of death has been defeated. If we had only the hope of this life alone, we'd be of all men most miserable. But thank God that is not the case. He has made a way for us to overcome and thrive and completely live forever in his glory. Don't let a victim mentality rob you of that truth. Remember this. Don't grieve without him just because they still died despite your prayers because that's a dangerous place for a born-again Christian to be. Include him even when you don't understand. even when you don't understand. Otherwise, you'll be triggered into self-pity to give up. But with him, he can realign your heart with his kingdom that sees past the pain. Don't do it without him. He sees past the pain, and he will help you see past it too. Hallelujah. As I close today, grieving is natural and necessary. But we cannot allow Satan to use the self-pity that it can trigger against us in order to destroy our own lives. Give me my last shouting point. Excuse me, I, I had one more, I forgot. You may have lost someone, but you don't have to lose everything else. You may have lost someone, but you don't have to lose everything else. The statistics are staggering for Christians who allow grief to overwhelm and consume their lives. Studies show they lose their jobs, they lose their health, they lose their marriage, 
they lose their friends. Their isolation makes them vulnerable to so many spiritual attacks. Amen. It is natural and necessary to grieve, but don't let it trigger you into being a victim. You are not a victim. You are a victor. Remember, the kind of victimology that we're preaching on here is not PTSD. Not the things that happen to people who suffer crimes. It's the kind of victimology where we glorify being a victim. The second definition. And if you think like a victim, you'll never have victory. You'll never have victory if you keep thinking like a victim. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. Amen. It hurt to lose my father, my earthly father. But I will see him again one day. Amen. All the ladies that raised their hands while ago, you will see your earthly fathers again. Amen. What we've got to focus on now is the loved ones we've got around us. What kind of spiritual shape are they in? Are we speaking up to them? Are we afraid to tell them what they need to hear? Come on, somebody. In these last of the last days, Satan is looking to trip some people up. And God is looking to break them down so that he can get the best out of them. He wants to take their backwards doctrines, their fleshly thinking, their fleshly living. Amen. Their justified sins and their excuses and get them to push them away and finally serve him, love him with all their heart. Amen. That's where God's trying to get some people. So you're going to see some people wavering. You're going to see some people in some confusing ways. You're going to see some things. But I'm here to tell you God is shaking some trees. God is breaking some people down. Pray for them. Love on them. Be patient with them, hallelujah, and claim their comeback in Jesus' name. But don't let it drag you down. Don't let what other people are, are allowing to happen to them happen to you. you got to rise up. Somebody's got to be strong in that family. Somebody's got to be strong in that marriage. Somebody has got to keep believing God for the breakthrough. Did you receive anything this morning? Then get on your feet and give God a praise. With every head bowed and every... Hey everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall. Thanking you for joining us and we hope you're having a great summer. And we would love for you to join us in person if you're in driving distance every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our cafe opens at 8.45 a.m. with hot coffee and all kinds of refreshments and treats. And then at 10 o'clock, you're going to hear Freedom Worship. And we're going to have a great series preaching for you. King's Kids will be in session for the elementary students. And then on Wednesday night, we have our, our weekly midweek Bible study this summer with all the youth groups for the Fusion students in middle and high school, as well as King's Kids and Junior King's Kids. And that's every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And at 5.45 p.m., our cafe opens uh, as well during the week. So come on right now. We've got all the other ministries shut down for the summer because people are traveling. People are having vacation time. But we're still here having church for our worship celebration every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and our midweek Bible study uh, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So we hope you're having a great summer. And if you're in town and not on vacation, come join us here at CFC where we are all about Him and lives truly change here. What do you say about that, Pastor Tim? We're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. Yeah. So come and see us. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in.